Good morning, everyone. I'm going to call to order the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for Saturday, November 12th, 2022. Uh, at this time, it is 9.02 a.m. Our first item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I ask that everyone please rise for that. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For everyone's awareness, the meetings, as always, are being recorded for audio and video. Please silence your cell phones. And uh, for anybody that is interested, masks and hand sanitizer are available at the front of the room. Uh, anyone wishing to address the board can do so by coming up to the front. Uh, please be sure to sign in on the sign-in sheet and to clearly state your name and address when making your comment. Donald signed in. Come on up. Oh. Okay. Uh, at this time, I'll open up the floor to public comment. Don's coming up to the microphone. Okay. Good morning. My name is Donald Height. I represent the MTCA. Excuse me. I live at 41 Main Street, Stoutsburg. Okay. My question as of today. Uh, I, I thought we had a, a uh, meeting on Thursday, the MTCA, and it was the first time I found out that uh, there is a problem with what we're doing back at the uh, ice skating rink as far as the insurance. Yeah. I would like to know in writing what is expected of us or what is going to happen with the ice skating rink. What's the problem? What's the problem? What are we supposed to do according to there's this? signage that needs to put up be put up? There was a motion made at the workshop meeting. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. That that we surrogate will... supervisor. Wait, let, let, let me know. Sure. No, 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 no. She has she has the information. Okay. There was a motion made at the last workshop meeting that the supervisor will put the sign up. Yeah, the insurance has gone through. That was a done okay. deal. Yeah. yeah, that's not a problem. Can we know what's going on? The insurance has been insurance. processed. Yeah, it's 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 well, application's been filled out. There's not a problem. What do you it's need to know? for? I, like I'm confused. You have to know uh, what? How many hours can this? Oh, ice skating until rink? sunset. It can't be operated. So at the night. the rink has to be. Um, it has to match the park hours, hours as the park hours. That's okay. Yeah. If we put out uh, spotlights. No. No. Not according to the insurance. So. I mean, the park hours could always be changed. Yeah, that's, that's the, the way around that, Irene, would be yeah. to change the park hours. I'll have to call EMC to see what their stance is on that. So, because I don't know if that's going to affect our park hours as well and affect our overall insurance. Yeah, I don't know. So I would have to call EMC. What time do you want it to be open till, Jim? Oh. What time do you want it to be open till? What time do we want the break open? Well, we have, we have not talked that much. As far as our association, we have not talked about hours or uh, days because we have to apply people to be there. We just don't want to open and no one be there. Okay. Uh, so that is, that is going to have to depend on what you do with insurance or what insurance allows us to do. We kind of figured there were more skating in the evenings that the people come home. Yeah, we talked we about that. They like saving time. Mm -hmm. uh, that's normally when you see people out in the ponds and stop skating. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah so I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to make a call over to EMC and see what else we need to do. And I, I would assume that as long as it's not cost prohibitive, okay. then it should be a problem. Right. So I'll I'll give them a call. I'll give them a call Monday. Okay. Yeah, that's Lee and Don. We had talked about that at the last meeting yeah. about amending the park hours instead of being like dawn till dusk, being an actual like time, like let's say 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. or something like that. Um, knowing that during the winter time, during daylight savings time, you know, there are going to be some some dark hours there that we would need lights. So you did come up late enough? There, well, keep in mind there's a curfew. We have an ordinance for a curfew, which is 10 o'clock. Yeah. yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, you know, I have to be in at ten o'clock. Well, you're kidding.
I guess another question that came up from our meeting. Come up to the microphone. Sorry, but you can hear me. As to the meeting. Yeah, stand up. Yeah. <laughs> as, another question came up at the meeting as to who actually owns the flagman. The, the township. 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 We have a deed. We have a copy of the deed. Whatever someone is telling you is false information. If they have a different deed, then they can have a dispute in court about it, but the deed belongs to the township. If the township sells the building, then the playground reverts back to the Conrad Weiser School District. It is up to the Conrad Weiser School District as to what the disposition is of the playground at that point in time. That dispute's come up before. Hi, Kelly Cox, 541 Richland Road, Richland. In picking back on what Don is saying with the community association, so you own the land, correct? But you don't own it if you sell your building. Well, that's typically what a sale is. If we sell the property, then the property goes in its entirety. The deed says that the playground has to stay with the building. If the if the building sold, the playground has to stay with it. That's right. what the deed says. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. So regardless of what we do over there, eventually it might not be ours. Correct. Okay. And then it's my understanding when Don Height met with Kimberly DeRosa of um, Hydrata Hyd Professionals that we cannot pursue a grant that the township has to pursue that grant? She told me that the community association cannot apply for the grant because they don't own the property. Those were her words. Okay. The township would have to apply for the grant. And are you pursuing that, applying for the grant? Don't look at me. I don't make Not decisions. right now. <laughs> Not right now. What do we want a grant for? Playground equipment. Oh, well, yeah, well, we should have done that. Okay. There's been a dispute over whether we want to keep the playground. Anything else regarding how is that? How is that deed written up? You want a copy of it? I have it in my email. It's on Google Drive. I put it on yep. Google I mean, Drive. Is there a chance we can change that? There's always a chance, but you have to go through the proper channels. Okay. So it, it, it automatically, according to the property law, it automatically reverts back to the Conrad Weiser School District. At that point, if Conrad Weiser wants to sever the deed and create two parcels and then allow to remain as part of the township property, that, that can be done. I don't know what hoops you'd have to jump through, but that's not impossible. Uh, but but that, as of now, right, there are right. restrictions on the deed. Right. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. this doesn't function as a school anymore. Things have changed considerably. And with a good argument, I, I, I can imagine that they would allow it, but I can't predict their behavior. Why would they want another parcel of land that they're liable for? You know, they would have to have insurance, maintenance, et cetera. It doesn't make sense for them to want to have the property um, but I can't answer that question. They may say, oh, of course we want it as a satellite location. We want to tear everything down and build a field. I can't predict that behavior. So, you can know, we, that's uh, entirely up to you. Somehow, well, can we, that, can that we talk to Andy? Right. right. Go ahead, Peter. Can we talk to Andy and see if there's something that we would be able to do in advance of any ownership changes. Like if, um, if Conrad Weiser says like we we're willing to to remove the restriction on the deed. We don't care. This is from way back in the day. We might be able to do that before anything changes. Right. right. That was what, 1977? 1971. 71. Okay. Yeah. So let's let's get a line out to Andy. Ask about sure. that. Because where there where there's a will or a deed, there's a way. Right, um, right. But, so it's it's uh it's just having the question asked and answered, that's all. Okay. So you have a separate deed for the building? No. No, it's one, one piece. Of, it's considered one, one piece of property. Is it possible for MTCA to have a copy of yeah. that deed? Yeah, absolutely. Is it on Google Drive for I the public? No, if it's on public. I okay. forget where I put Kelly, it. On Kelly, yeah. I'll copy yeah. it one off the of drive and email it to you. Yeah. And of course, you could always go down to the, the um, recorder of deeds also 
And if you have, it's on, actually, it's, on, it's, on, it's on their website on too. The yeah. I just please, please. think speaking on behalf of MPCA, we just feel very frustrated. We're trying to do stuff for the community, mm -hmm. for the playground, and we're getting nowhere. We're thinking we can do the uh, grants. We can't. It has to come from you folks. Mm -hmm. We feel there's not a whole lot of communication between the mm -hmm. Township Supervisor Board mm -hmm. and the Community Association. Mm -hmm. um, well, I could see previously when I briefly worked with Don about this at the beginning of my um, role here, uh, I'd asked Don to provide me with some additional information regarding the DCNR grants. And there was an outline that Peter had provided. I asked Don to fill it in. I didn't get any further information. And that stuff is, is, is very much required for grant writing. Now that we are working with a professional grant writing organization, we're going to need even more. So if you want us to help you, we need you to do some of that work too. I had given Don a whole bunch of details that needed to be filled out before that grant could be pursued. Because if you just say, hey, can I have money? They're not going to do that. I had given Don a, a pretty detailed outline. I can. Pro I think I have everything saved on my computer. If you want, I could give it to you. Because um, there was a lot of information missing. I had attended the... What was that? The the planning thing between the three communities was, was um they gave us some um, open spaces. It was the joint open spaces. Yeah, I had attended a couple of those meetings, and they provided a boatload of information, and we have a booklet on that. So there's so much information there that, um, when I had briefly spoken to Don, there wasn't any supplemental information that could be provided to apply for the grant that would have been adequate to get the grant. So I think it goes both ways. You know me, I'm available. If you want to talk to me, I'm more than happy to, to discuss with you what should have been included in that information when it was applied. I helped Don walk through everything with the computer that day. Jim came over my house. We went through everything, but I had asked Don for some supplemental information that was never provided. So understanding that now the, the obstacle is that the township has to do it. If I'm given all the information, I'll be more than happy to submit it, but I'm not going to submit an, a blank form and say, hey, can we have money? There has to be work done, and I need you guys to do that on your behalf because I really have a full plate with everything. I, I want to help out the community. Trust me, I, I, I want to make things wonderful here. Just keep in mind though, the, the plan is at this point also to um, hopefully sell this building, build a new one, anticipating that we would be able to get some grants for a new building. We would be willing to build a new playground elsewhere. I understand the history and the significance of having it here. I'm not object to that, but we have to have that first question answered as to whether or not that deed can be severed and have two um, uh, places. And so once there are two parcels, then it's not an issue anymore. That parcel then can be, um, if they want to grant it to the MTCA or whatever other organization, as long as the parcels are now split, then you can do with the property as you wish. Okay. So that's going to be pursued. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yes, Gansy. Yeah. That's not a problem whatsoever. Yeah, that's what we should do. Yeah. Okay. See if right. they will sign off right. on it. And we can either give it to you or... Right. I think that'd be appropriate. For It'd be here. granted, and then you're a 501c3, right. and then you could find out what are other options you have available for funding. Okay, and then the other thing what I was saying about communication is like, send us something regarding okay the insurance is requiring this this and this you can see it in the minutes work. it's in the minutes right Every, everything was meeting. done at, right everything was done at the last meeting and, and it, it's available they said they said yes they, there was no prohibitions other than the hours um and then well, it there was was signage specific yeah. things that they require on, right. the, oh, right. on the signage right. and that was it and, and we're we're going to get the signage like right. we're we're taking care of that that's no problem and the signs ordered peter I didn't order them yet because we're still hammering down the details on like the hours. I don't want to order signs that say like open dawn till dusk and then have us change the hours. Yeah. So okay. what I'm hearing is for us to know what's going on, it's in the minute. We should just see it in the minutes. Yeah. Okay. But we could send you something. Kelly, uh, Jim, or actually Jim, um, have you been going to the MTCA meetings? I wasn't at the last couple because of. Impairment. Okay. Okay, so um, I guess our takeaway on this is, um, Jim, if you're not going to be there, let us know, and then we can try and figure out whether it's me or Irene or somebody. We, we can at least have one of us there, because Kelly will we'll pass along stuff okay. like that as kind of an update when somebody's there or should be there. 
And that would be much appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you. And then while we're on MTCA, I just wanted to say that we have um, the tree lighting ceremony is Sunday, December 11th at 6 p.m. Oh my God, I'm sorry, maybe around the corner already. Yeah. What was the date? Sunday, December, December 11th, 6 p.m. 85 Main Street in front of the old social hall. We're here, aren't we? <laughs> Where did the year go? Thank you for your time. Good question. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Kelly. Okay, we have no one on the Zoom other than myself. And uh, seeing no public comments additional, we'll uh, move into the items for discussion. The first is the Act 537. Our SEO is doing inspections in the Northwest District. Uh, Joe and Kimberly from Hydroterra um, are not here today, but they did pass along some notes that we'll be going over. Uh, we were notified on November 1st that our application for the local share account LSA grant is being reviewed. Uh, there were a couple of corrections that they had asked for around the percentage of legal fees, which um, based on the emails, it looks like Kimberly took care of that. So that's in and, and moving along. Um, a new resolution would be needed if the grant amount uh, or exceeds the amount on the resolution that was adopted, the 524000 um, After some discussion, Andy, Cam, and Joe reworked some of the numbers and submitted the revised uh, Exhibit 2 Opinion of Probable Costs and the revised project budget. Um, in addition to that, uh, Joe passed along an email. I'm not sure if everybody got a chance to read it from uh, yesterday at around two in the afternoon. Um, the DEP had pointed out that our schedule of things is a little bit skewed based on where we're at in the overall process. Uh, they seem willing to let us modify it. And Joe submitted a revised uh, set of suggestions timing. Uh, I'll put this onto a, a calendar format so that it's a little more digestible. But the long and short of it would be that we would get uh, grant funding secured for project design, specifically around the design, by May of 2023. We would prepare the design uh, by November 2023, um, uh, get it ready for permits uh, December 2023, and then work on obtaining design permitting um, for tw July 2024. Uh, we would then be looking for grants and financing for the project construction between October 2024, uh, 2024 and April 2025. We would be I, optimistically looking to advertise for construction bids in June of 2025 and looking to award the contract for construction in October of, of 2025. Um, the only thing that really jumps out at me is the relatively small window for the grant uh, submit grants financing for project construction. Um, I'll talk to Joe about that and see if that would be worthwhile to extend that an additional bit of time just in case we don't get any during that period or don't get enough during that period. Uh, but otherwise, I don't have any strong objections to the timeline adjustments. Jim or Irene, any concerns therein? No, no, I agree with you. And uh, I really appreciate the work that Joe and Kimberly and everyone at uh, Hydroterra are doing for us. Yeah, they're they're a pleasure to work with. And I'm, I'm glad we have somebody yep. with that kind of communication and knowledge working yep. with us on this. Yep, that level of experience. Okay, we don't have anything additional on that. I'll move on to the next item, which is the Dutch Valley Food Distributors, uh, L-E-R-T-A or LERTA. Uh, a hearing will take place on Thursday, November 17th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Uh, the ordinance will be considered for adoption during the Board of Supervisors meeting immediately after the hearing. The property has been posted uh, for this. Um, Sue, so we should be there on the 17th for that, correct? Like the board? That's Thursday night. Oh, uh, that's that's the meeting. Duh. Sorry. Yeah, it's Thursday night. Yep. Never mind. Okay. Never mind. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay. So yeah, we definitely should be there for that. Yep. Um, the if we don't have anything additional on that, the next item is the Creekview Dairy Operations nine fifty two Route four nineteen. According to their improvement and maintenance agreement that was dated uh, February twenty third seventeen, they were to complete all stormwater and other improvements within eighteen months. Uh, the township engineer, secretary, and roadmaster, along with the property owner and his excavator, 
uh, NBCCD met on Friday, November 4th, to review the swales that were installed instead of a pipe. Uh, we are expecting a report from our engineer and also Gene Rickards, who will check the NPDS permit uh, to ensure that it has been closed. So as long as they're going through the proper channels of getting that, that plan uh, adjusted so that it's as built and it meets the scrutiny of our engineer, I don't think we have anything else to do on that. They'll close that out successfully. At this point, we're just waiting for the report from Jason Rickards and Chuck. Good. With any luck, we'll have that Thursday night. If not, we'll just take care of that in, in December. Yeah, exactly. Okay, next is the road projects for 2022, uh, along with culverts. Uh, we are not 100% sure when Monarch will begin manufacturing the four culverts, we're and we're still waiting for the permit for Marion Drive north of school, uh, but we'll be keeping a close eye on that. Uh, Butch is getting quotes for the speed sign, uh, the posts that we need to put in for the speed signs that we had picked up. Um, Butch, let me know if the two and three eighths will work. Just give me a call, shoot me a text message, whatever. Um, let me know if that will work and if we can get it cheaper locally uh, from like Binkley and Hearst or somebody like that, rather than trying to do the, the three or three and a half, which is wildly expensive. Okay, I'll, I'll work on that until Thursday and I'll leave you know. Okay, thank you. Okay, not much other news there. Uh, the next item is the extension of the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. McCarthy Engineering has done a site survey and the PA1 call, excuse me, was performed. There is a gas line running along the east side of Marion Drive to Main Street. Uh, Mangat Dent Street had uh, contributed a total of $5,325 um, when they had moved in for stormwater improvements back in 2014. Um, Jim McCarthy would like to do an on-site meeting with me or somebody else from the township, so I'll, I'll get that lined up with him and Butch uh, to see what we have to do with that. It may be something as simple as just uh, digging the pipe in on the opposite side of the street uh, so that we're not disturbing any of the area near the gas line. So, Peter, I had noticed that um, the proposed sewer is going from Main Street back to that house on the alley. Yeah. So um, we have to be aware of where the sewer line is going to. Yeah, the sewer line is much, much, much deeper. And if I'm not mistaken on that, the sewer line is down the center of the street. That I don't know. Yeah, I'll, I'll check the plans and I'll talk to Jim McCarthy about that. But um, the sewer line depth is much deeper than just a storm sewer. And typically it's down the, the center line of the road rather than like us doing it on the, the far side. Peter. Yeah. Why, why don't we wait uh, to do something like that to put the sewer in? I mean, because of the flooding. Because it could, it's going to be at least yeah. a couple of years, bare minimum, yeah. another three years. And we need yeah. to do something about this now rather yeah. than waiting yeah. a, waiting three years. So yeah. I'll, I'll talk to Jim McCarthy. Um, I'm going to make myself a note here. Peter, I've got a question for you on this. Sure. Will this project be turned over to Chuck uh, mm -hmm. after the first of the year? That's the goal, is to okay. get a, a smooth handoff, because McCarthy had already started it. Okay. So we want to get it to a point where they can kind of hand the stuff off to Chuck, and then Chuck can take it and run with it. Okay. And if there's a more extensive project with regard to the stormwater issue, then, again, yeah. my, my conversation with Penn Strategies grants are available for issues like that it's just knowing the extent of uh the project so yeah for what it's worth uh one of the things that i had asked jim mccarthy and his group to to do specifically was uh try and identify if there is risk around sinkhole or anything else um mm -hmm. there was no mention of that in the report okay. so I'll, I'll double check with him of course but that's kind of a no news is good news kind of situation mm -hmm. Okay. Next is the Comcast franchise renewal. We got a proposal from Cohen Law Group about negotiating the new contract. Their fee is $10,500, but they would give us a 15% discount uh, with a cost of $8,925. We receive approximately $15,000 a year or 5% uh, from Comcast, and it is a 10-year agreement. Um, so where we left off the last time is we need to try to figure out if it's worth spending uh, essentially $892 a year for the next 10 to 10 years 
uh, if we think Cohen is going to be able to get us uh, more than that, approximately fifteen thousand dollars annually in the Comcast agreement. Yeah, every every year the um, amount has actually increased a little bit. Um, I want to say I think this year is up about maybe two or three thousand dollars from last year. So every year the amount goes up. Um, what I did like about Cohen Law Group's proposal is they do an audit and they said about 65% of the time, they actually find that um, uh, franchisees are not receiving the amount due to them so that we actually receive less than what is due. So to me, that is worth the amount. And just as you said, $892 a year paying for that service, I don't think is much considering how much we can gain in return. So I'm in favor of it. Um, I briefly read through what Eric Wilden from Comcast gave us, and it really doesn't say much. So I would be, I'm in for, I'm in favor of having Cohen Law Group uh, negotiate a new contract for us. Yeah, I know it's it's on the surface it's a lot of money, but when you think yes. about the ten year agreement and the fact that you're you're looking at a less than a thousand dollars out of the fifteen thousand. If we get more than a thousand dollars out of this, we've more than broke even. Yeah, but you're paying the eight thousand nine hundred and twenty-five now, not over. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Which we have the money, like we could move something out of the money market to cover it, since it's not wholly budgeted. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, uh, that's. If we think it's actually going to be a prudent move to get more money out of the franchise agreement, we can we can find a way to pay for it. Right. I ha I have no way to determine whether or not Comcast has been giving us our our due amounts, and apparently Cohen Law Group has had this experience and has done this several times. Otherwise, I don't think Andy would have referred us on to that specialty group. So. I would much rather ask the questions that we don't know to ask, as we've all said before, and get them answered, and we would know. So, yeah. you know, we do this this one time, and if it's to our satisfaction, then we know, but we don't know how much more we could potentially get unless and until we pursue the question. So, yeah. And this is a pretty niche type of, of contract. So, there's, there's a lot of, of things that you don't really know that you don't know. Yep. On that, Comcast nope. has not made us an additional offer. It's still just five percent. Yeah, but we don't even know if we're well, getting five percent. Yeah, we don't. We don't even know if we're getting that. Right. And the other thing is, it's five percent of. There's a, a list of of services that Comcast subscribes that we right. we might be missing out on some big ones. We might not. Whereas the the law firm there, this is what they do. They know this in and out. That you know, hey, you're missing this particular cable package, which is what most people have, you're really missing out on a lot of money here. Um, or just to play devil's advocate, we could find that it's it's a, a really good agreement that Comcast has. It's, I, I'll be honest, I don't have the expertise to be able to, to look it over and say yes or no to that. Right. Of course, we know that whatever they negotiate, Comcast is gonna add it on to the user. They're not just paying well, it out. Okay. Well, Comcast Comcast has a lot of no, agreements and things. So what did you say, Peter? I was going to say Comcast has a lot of people locked in on contracts and agreements and things like that. And um, yes, at some point, cost has to come from somewhere. But they realistically, they have this budgeted for somewhere. And it's just a if they don't pay it out, that's a better bottom line for them. So we can we can always talk about this more on Thursday, but um, personally, I'm I'm kind of in agreement with Irene that we spend the money, get it properly negotiated, and realistically speaking, we should be able to get more than nine hundred dollars annually additional on that. Okay, if we don't have anything additional on that point, we'll move to the next item, which is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403 Amendment. Uh, this is about the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. Uh, at last month's meeting, a motion was made to present the Western Berks Joint Zoning Amendment to the Joint Planning Commission. Um, I have not seen an update if that 
meeting has already happened or if it's happening later in November or not, but that is the next step. Once we hear back from them, I believe that goes to um, each one of the municipalities for review after that. Okay, uh, next item is the building property renovations and the new building. Um, as we had discussed before, we're, we're assessing options for lo relocating uh, the building to somewhere else. There's really nothing new there or new items to discuss at this time. Um, the next step is to start talking to real estate agents and see if there's uh, land available in Marion Township, ideally on uh, 422 there or right near 422 uh, that can be used for a new uh, community center uh, office and like playground area. Next item is the emergency management coordinator equipment. I'll turn it over to Irene. So John, John submitted a quote for a drone for the amount of $1,395. I believe that's in the packet. I do have a statement from John, and if, I'll read it later on under the supervisor's comments. I've also okay. been trying to gather information with respect to emergency management needs so that we could properly submit uh, an information packet along with uh, possibly a grant request to Penn Strategies. Once I have all that information compiled, I'll be able to present everything to the board. I've reached out to other emergency management coordinators within the county. Um, I may be talking to someone at the county level and maybe to our adjacent counties so that we could have the most detailed information that we can before we actually um, take the step forward to um, submit for a grant because the more information we're able to give them, the less it costs us as we've learned with the grant submission. So I'd like to get all that homework done essentially. I'm hoping to have it done by the end of the year, but I can't say that I will. Um, may I go on to item number 10 then as well, Peter? Please. So that goes along with uh, the Topol Hopkins Township Police Department equipment and grant opportunities. Chief Dronick was nice enough to send us a list. I have to reach out to both the police department as well as our township secretary in order to gather sufficient enough information so that we could submit that. I know at the prior meetings, I asked that we work on some type of an agreement where we help with the grant costs, but not matching funds or any other costs, just simply the cost of the grant application, because obviously we share their police departments. Um, I don't know what structure, payment structure they have in place for their police department, but because we're, we're contracted, with them, we're already paying for those services, but anything that we can do to help out our police departments, I, I think that's worthwhile, our effort. Again, it's a matter, a matter of gathering data. So the more information I'm able to provide to a grant writer, I think the less it would cost us. And if I could provide that in a concise form with enough um, hard, cold numbers and statistics, then I think that helps us in the long run as far as uh, getting the funding that we need for both opportunities. Okay. And looking over Chief Dronick's email that he had sent. I think it comes to like close, a little over $100,000 worth of needs, maybe maybe yeah. more. And uh, it's sad. It's really sad that he does not have the equipment that he needs to function properly with regards to police department. It's, it's for the benefit and protection of all the residents in both communities, as well as the safety of his officers. And I want to do everything that I possibly can to have all the information and submit it. And so hopefully we can get something. I mean, it's yeah. great to have a wish list. It's another thing to have that wish list come true. And I'm going to try to do my best to to assist that in that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm all for helping them. Um, a lot of these things are not time sensitive. The only one that's really time right. sensitive is the third MDT. Yeah. Um, I, I would be curious if, like Tulpahawken Township, us and any of the other municipalities that they provide coverage for would be willing to split that that amount just collectively and get them that uh, that MDT that they need. Yep. So there's there's a lot to review there, and uh, I'm going to try to put as much information as I can together. We'll have a discussion, and then hopefully be able to submit things to a grant writer and go that route. Okay, very good. Yeah, I look forward to working on that with you. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help with that. Sure, proofing and uh, 
on uh, making sure everything is succinct as possible. Excellent. Okay, next item is the fire extinguishers. Uh, we did receive a quote from Jason Evans Kistler O'Brien for five fire extinguishers with uh, installation coming to a total of $610. Uh, they would inspect them annually for a fee of eighty-two dollars and fifty cents. Um, I'll make a motion to. That was the move. only one that showed yeah. up so far. Yeah, that's the. Yeah, only I mean, one. it's we've been we need fire extinguishers. Yeah. The bottom line on that, and we've been without them for far longer than we should have. So it's yeah. under the the amount where we need the three yeah. bids. And I had I had reached out for um to four different agencies and apparently they're the only ones that showed up. Yeah. I think I'll, two others said they would. I'll, yeah. Uh, are they going to install? Yes. yes. Install, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's that's start to finish. We tell them to do it and they do it. He said that code um, says um, they, something about being 75 feet apart or something like that. Um, it's okay. He came up with five, so it's like, yeah. whatever you say. Yeah, I, it seems like a based on the size of the first floor, that seems like a, a pretty reasonable that you'd have like one in the office there. You'd have like one in the hallway, yeah, there, one in the meeting room. One by the main door, yeah. one in the AA room, um, one in the office, and then one in the garage. Okay. Only four. Uh, yeah, I think there's probably one in the, the hallway back there or Was one in the meeting the room. Yeah, yeah, it could be done. And he said one goes down there? Yeah. I wasn't down there, I don't know. Okay. I mean, okay. I, either way, I'm I'm on board yeah. with that. I'll make a motion yeah. to approve the Jason Evans Kissler O'Brien five fire fire extinguishers with installation for six hundred and ten dollars and fifty cents. Six hundred. Six hundred. Excuse me. Thank you. Six hundred and ten dollars and fifty cents. Seconds. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Just let him know. I think somebody has to sign this, I think. Can you sign it? Of course. Okay. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Marlon Ray Martin Poultry Operation Letter of Credit. Uh, at the September Board of Supervisors meeting, a motion was made to reduce their letter of credit in an amount of $20,333.71. Uh, the secretary had a balance of $42,466.70 and didn't realize uh, that there have been three auto increases, making the balance actually $56,523.18. Uh, Andy suggested that we make a motion to ratify the correct amount on the letter of credit to be released as it should have been $30,043.52 with an amount to be retained of $26,479.66. So I'll make a motion to uh, correct the amount on the letter of credit for the Marlon Ray Martin poultry operation uh, to be released of $30,043.52 with a retained amount of $26,479.66. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the PennDOT replacement of the culvert over Mill Creek in Topahawken Township. The project includes the culvert replacement and minor roadway reconstruction on the existing alignment. They will be sending us plans to display and invites to public input for the project by accessing the www.pendot.gov slash district five. Uh, click on the public meeting link under the district links heading and then pick the, pick the Berks County box and then choose the culvert replacement project. Um, I'll put that as a like a sticky on the website. Um, just as a, a side note, Jim, you had sent a, a good draft of a like winter. Everybody, please be aware that you shouldn't like shovel snow places. I'll put that as a, a sticky on the, the main page of the website, too, so that people have a uh, like winter winter tips from the township yeah. sort of thing. Can you include that they're responsible for clearing their sidewalks within a yep. certain amount of time by ordinance? Yep. I'll, I'll circulate a draft before yeah. I actually put it out on the website. But yeah, the, the intent you. here is to remind people that like during snow emergency that you need to not park on certain roads um, and that you shouldn't shovel your, your sidewalks into the street. It makes it that much harder to plow and that you do need to clear your sidewalks because you as a homeowner are responsible and liable for if there are accidents that happened from a, a poorly shoveled uh, sidewalk. 
So I'll be working on getting that together and circulating something that we can all look at and get on board with. But I'll, I'll put the direct link to the, the culvert thing on the website as well. That way, if anybody does want to go and review it and put a public comment against it, they certainly can. I did have a phone call from a gentleman about this this week. They're going to be sending us big display boards about this that we can display it um, also. Okay. That's kind of nice. Yeah, it's very, that is very nice. Um, the final bit of that, it's going to be available, it looks like, from November 18th to December 2nd. Um, and they would like us to complete the survey that they sent us. Who's going to do that? Um, we? Well, that's that's the question. Um, do you have, did that come in like an email or is it a paper copy that they sent us? Um, I had, I think I emailed that to you, but I have a paper copy. Okay. I'll, I'll double check. Um, I'll talk to you on Monday about that, Sue. I don't mind filling it out. I just need to remember what it is exactly. I can, I thought I scanned it and emailed to you. You, you might've, I might've missed it in all, in all honesty. Yeah. Yeah. I can. Yeah. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the terms that are expiring for January 2023. Uh, the first one is Mervyn Brubaker on the Planning Commission. The next is David Weaver on the Zoning Hearing. Nancy Carrington on Vacancy Board Chairman. And then John Selesky for Emergency Management Coordinator. Um, Sue, are you going to reach out to them per the usual to see if they're interested in so serving? I already, I already did. Mervyn's willing oh, to serve another term. Perfect. Um, I think Planning Commission is... Four years. Yeah. Uh, David Weaver's willing to serve another term. I think that one's five years. Um, Nancy Carrington actually moved out of the township, so you need yeah. to find somebody okay. to fill that position. Vacancy board chairman. Okay. And that's just a one year appointed thing, but. Um, yeah, if anybody John, knows. John's willing to serve again. Okay. And he's Perfect. appointed every year, or yeah. EMC is appointed every year, I should say. Yeah. So for the, the vacancy board chairman, if anybody knows anybody that would be interested in serving that capacity, they, there's really not much work entailed with that. The only time that they, they get engaged is if there is a, a vacancy on the board and the two remaining supervisors uh, cannot reach a consensus on on appointment. They're, they're effectively the tiebreaker on that. Otherwise, you don't really have to do anything on that, that particular position. Um, so if you have any suggestions, anybody in the audience, if you know somebody who is, is interested in that, please put their name forward. Otherwise, we'll move on to the next item, which is the final item on the agenda, which is the proposed budget. Um, Sue, I apologize for the delay in me getting that over to you. It's been a All rough right. like week and a half. Um, we uh, made a motion to accept the budget at the last meeting with a proposed millage of 2.75, which would have, which brings the, the budget into balance. Um, the street light millage was 0.65, uh, 65 cents, uh, and the sewer levy, the on-lot pump-out inspection, was left at $50. Um, we did miss the, the day by a slight margin to be able to advertise this uh, for the November meeting, so we're going to have to do this at the December meeting, which is no big deal. Um, we would just have to adopt it at that point, much like we did last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, moving into comments, I have no comments. Irene, do you have anything you want to bring up? Of course I do. Perfect. Um, <laughs> of course, I always have comments. Um, Sue was kind enough to forward uh, email from UGI. So they're implementing a new policy called weather normalization adjustment. So a uh, fancy word for saying they may increase our um, billing based on anticipated increased needs for um, heating costs. Ouch. Yeah, yeah. So it's a uh, three percent weather limit. That's it's three percent is what they're telling us it's about. I'm just going to put this in the file with with the bills. There's nothing we could do about it. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, due to the nature of the building, we lose heat like crazy out the windows. So there's no insulation in here. So I mean, Sue and I keep it as cool as we possibly can. And you know. Yeah. You got to keep it to a certain degree, otherwise you start having yeah. pipes freezing and things too. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, as I mentioned before, I do have a report for John. I'm going to read it off. Okay. 
I'll try to translate his um, uh, technical terms. So uh, he has recently completed several FEMA and PEMA classes, both that's a Pennsylvania Emergency Management and Federal Emergency Management classes. And these are minimum requirements for any emergency um, uh, management coordinator. The ICS 300 Intermediate Incident Command System for Expanding Incidents at FCI Schuylkill on October 31st and November 1st and 2nd. IS 315.A CERT and Incident Command System on November 6th. G290 Basic Public Information Officer at Lehigh County, November 9th and 10th. IS120 Introduction to Exercises, November 11th. Uh, also, he completed the IS42 Social Media and Emergency Management, and he will be taking the ICS Advanced Incident Command System for complex incidents at FCI Schuylkill on November 14th and 15th. So he's spent, I would say, about 40 hours or more on all these classes. Oh, excuse me, more than that, about um, uh, 70 hours on, on these classes collectively. He also submitted an application to attend the National Emergency Management Basic Academy at National Fire Academy slash Emergency Management Institute in Emmitsburg, Maryland. The dormitory is paid for by FEMA. Um, the meal, there's a meal card at a cost of $300 that's needed for the week. And he's asking the township to pay for that. He just has to drive there. This is the first of several resident classes he will be taking for advanced emergency management training and certifications. Um, he's going to forward the application to me because it needs to have board approval. Uh, he also completed all certification and classes for his local EMC basic certification and the local advanced certification this past week. And he's going to be completing the paperwork with the, with the Burks Emergency Management Association soon. He completed the IS0042A Social Media and Emergency Management, and he will be creating a social media account on Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, as the quote, official Marion Township Emergency Management Berks County PA. He also wants to start speaking to residents and businesses in the township, Stonecroft, et cetera, to better understand what our community uses to spread information amongst each other any religious groups, churches, et cetera. So he's gonna be reaching out. I'll make sure he reaches out to the MTCA as well. Um, during emergencies, weather related alerts or other immediate threats, we need to alert as many of our residents as fast as possible. And he has made a few requests to purchases. I have those quotes to submit to Sue here. He, um, a PFD vest, which is rescue rated personal flotation device to use during water emergencies. Um, Incident command boards to use during search and rescue operation for fire hazard materials and incidents, et cetera. And I have those quotes here. So I'll, I'll put things into a little bit more plain English because he came home from all these classes. He was extremely excited about all the information that he learned, uh, but also is quite um, concerned about the lack of preparation that Marion Township has and the fact that things have not been done for an indefinite amount of time. And when he spoke to someone at the county level, first of all, they were surprised to see him at these classes. And they were surprised that he was doing all this because we pretty much are the only group that hasn't participated in all of these um, classes and events for I don't know how long. So in his assessment, along with other county officials, we are severely lacking in any capabilities at all for any type of emergency management, any type of an emergency event, which we've had in the past several years. We had the hurricanes uh, uh, less than 10 years ago. We've had flooding numerous times along Canal Road and other areas. Unfortunately, we have a lot of culverts that are failing and in the incidents that one of those would fail and a vehicle would get trapped, that's a pretty serious scenario. We have no preparation. And I think his goal is to work with as many local resources as possible to work together to have citizens be activated as best as they can, whether it's helping people put a sign out saying, hey, this road is closed, or you can come to this location if you need a shelter, et cetera. So he's very excited about this, but also quite distressed at the, in, in some ways, the amount of work that he has to do, but also the lack of preparation that unfortunately our township has had over the past decade or more 
Uh, so Sue, I'm going to submit, he gave me three quotes for these um, emergency management command boards, incident boards. The least expensive is $1,478.80. $1, he provided additional documentation about the other incident command boards just to give us an idea over cost comparison. The rapid rescue uh, vest that he bought, that he was would like to purchase, that is the personal flotation device, is for the amount of $264.95. Since this is something that I'm just bringing up now, um, obviously we're going to have to table this for discussion at the next board meeting, and I'll submit that to Sue. Um, other than that, I really don't have anything further to discuss. I'm going to submit John's statement to if he wants to include those items in the minutes. Does he have information about this um, convention? Or thing that yes, he yes, it, it's on there, and he will, he will get you as much detail as you need. You guys, so yeah, that, yeah. Okay. So I think that's pretty amazing that it's only a $300 meal card, and he has that time through FEMA. And he's, he's really working diligently to obtain all the certifications that he needs to have to provide us with the best information, the best services possible. And he really wants to work with community as far as reaching out and getting people involved, because I think that's something we all kind of feel. We, you know, I came onto this board wanting to work with people in the community, then COVID hit and we all were in lockdown. And, you know, it's getting to relearn things. And, and we have so many other issues that, that are going on. And uh, granted, he, he's working in this aspect that, you know, we want to be able to prepare for, for bad events, essentially. But it'd be nice to, to reach out to businesses and other community members say, hey, you know, we're here. We want you to participate. We're not just this building where we process your permits. We're here to work together when, when bad things and good things happen, too. So it'd be kind of interesting. He has an, a concept over a CERT team within the community. So John's a very enthusiastic kind of a, a person. The other thing I need to ask you is um, who can he reach out at... Um, to Dutch Valley Foods to talk to them about, um, you have that information. Uh, what, well, who, who was the guy that we had at the meeting? Well, he was just for this Lerda thing. Okay, just for the Lerda Baker thing. Baker is one of the, he's my vice president or something like a president. I don't know, we need to, he wants to reach out to Dutch him, Valley because again, if there's an incident at Dutch Valley with the amount I'm of- I'm sure they yeah. have a safety- Right, right. but he, he, as the emergency management coordinator, mm -hmm. He needs to know because then mm -hmm. that, you know, you're tapping into county resources if there's ever a major mm -hmm. incident. So again, like things like I don't think any of us really thought about, about the risks that it has to us as a, as a general community. So um, I'm hoping he's able to come to some of the meetings, but like today he's, he's in a class, uh, he's teaching a class in Fleetwood. So um, I'm going to just encourage him to either do a write-up or a short video that he could submit to the meetings. So thank you. Yeah, Thank you very much. Enthusiastic about this. Yeah, he is. He's very passionate about what he does. He hasn't spent any money in his budgets. So yeah. The, the little bit that he's asking for is isn't even close to his budget. So yeah. He's doing a great job. Yeah. The other. You know how much we appreciate the fact that he's doing this as a volunteer, basically. He's oh yeah. Paying him to do any of this. So yeah. He's doing a fantastic job. Thank you. Yeah, I, I really do appreciate John's knowledge and his. Um, fervor for this sort of thing oh he's he's been like that for 30 years and and he's always been a volunteer and that's how i met him and uh he's he's extremely passionate about what he does but he also again the things that he doesn't know he's willing to go out and educate himself about and it's been very eye-opening about it and he has a lot of people within the county that are extremely supportive so and they're able to get me the information that i need to so it's been really nice reaching out and, and talking with other individuals in the community when when he brings forth the the quotes and stuff for like the PFDs and everything else, um, pass along the ask to have the the tote the pump out totes that he wanted to do because yeah. we do have them yep. budget that let's let's pick them up before the spring like rain yeah. season rolls around. Yeah, yeah, I've asked him about that. Honestly, I I haven't seen him for more than uh, an hour a day, and I sleep next to him, and he leaves, and I leave, and that's about it. Maybe that's why. I think we're married for 26 years, but I think it's only been 10. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, do you have any comments? No comments. Sue, do you have any comments? Nothing. Okay, fantastic. At this point, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 9.56 a.m. There's a second. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. 
Jim. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone. I hope everyone has a good week and we'll see you on Thursday.